Welcome to our opening lecture for chapter 2.1, which is going to be the beginning of the Cartesian coordinate system. Now, the Cartesian coordinate system is uh, named after Rene Descartes, who um, described this. And basically, what Descartes said was let's, we know that on a number line, um, we have an origin value starting at zero, and we go in a positive direction by increments of one on infinitely, and we can go in a negative direction also by increments of one, but also infinitely. So Rene Descartes recognized that this creates for us one-dimensional space such that whenever we have a, um, a solution to an equation, and the solution will occur, we were able to graph it on a number line. Well, what Descartes did was say, hmm, what would happen if I were to take a second number line, rotate it 90 degrees, and set it right at the origin, right at the origin here of the first number line. And still we can describe going on this number line in a positive direction. And we can also go in a negative direction. But we've created something called a plane. And this plane is now two-dimensional space. And now, so we have to uh, name this space, right? I mean, before, when we just had one axis, that was only one dimension. So we didn't need to call it anything. But now, we have to differentiate numbers on our horizontal number line, also called an axis. We have a horizontal axis, and we have a... a vertical axis. So by convention we now call the horizontal axis x, which will be our independent axis, and the vertical axis we will call the y-axis. So we have x's and we have y's, and we can plot points now not just on this number line here. So that point has a value now, but so does a point out here, or a point in here, or a point down here, or even say a point down in this area, we'll say here. And we can name those points based on their distance from the origin. Before we name that, let's take a quick look at the different parts of the coordinate plane. Once I've created my plane, it is automatically divided up into these quadrants. One, two, I will name the quadrant one, quadrant two, this here is quadrant three, and known here is quadrant four. So what are some of the features of these quadrants? Well when we take a look at quadrant one Notice that all of my x values are positive on that number line, and all of my y values are positive on this number line. So this point here, which is we always start with the x first, so 1, 2, 3, 4, and 1, 2, 3, 4 up, is 4, 4. My coordinate pair, which is my x value and my y value, it's called a coordinate pair. In the first quadrant is positive and positive. Let's take a look at this green one here. What is this green one? Well, I go one, two, three, negative, and one up. Up is positive. So this one is at the coordinates negative three and one, because remember we name our x coordinate before our y coordinate. And so if you notice, all of the points on this quadrant will be 
a negative x and a positive positive y. Down here we have x is now at negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, and negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So this one is at negative 5, negative 3, and if you guess that all of my court all of my points in this quadrant will be both a negative x and a negative y, then you would be correct. So quadrant one is positive positive, quadrant two is negative positive, quadrant three is negative negative. So therefore, by process of elimination, what we haven't had yet is a positive x with a negative y. And for sure, if I go in this direction from the origin, one, two, and then down, one, two, three, let's see, one, two, and then down, so I'll go from one, one, two, and then down, three, then my point is at two, negative three, and you're right. My x is positive, and my y is negative. So that's a brief introduction to the Cartesian coordinate system. We are going to have lots of fun with this over the next couple of weeks.